Hi boys and girls, my name is Miss Rachel. I'm Miss Hulk's student teacher in her classroom this year, and I'm going to be teaching you guys your science lesson. So I know we were just doing social studies, but we're switching back over to science. So right now we're in chapter six, Earth's Resources, lesson one, how are minerals classified? So if you got into this video, you should have already looked at the do now, which was just a short five, six minute video, just introducing us to the chapter and some terms that we're going to be learning about throughout it. And the do now question was, what are rocks made out of? So the answer for that was minerals. And you should have found that by you, if you didn't catch it the first time in the video, you could have scrolled back and listened to the video again to find that correct answer. But if you didn't get it right, that's fine. It was just to do now, just a warm up to get us introduced to the lesson. So before we start, we are going to go over our vocab words. So the vocab words you can find in Google Classroom as well. That I've made a Quizlet for us, so you can use them as flashcards. You can test yourself just so you get familiar with those words. So before we start, we'll start with those. So mineral. So a mineral is natural, non-living solid crystals that make up rocks. So like I said again, in that do now question, that was your answer right there. The next word is luster. So luster is the way the surface of a mineral reflects light. So that sh when you're in your car, you know, you can't see out the window, the light shining into bright, that reflection that's coming off from the sun and hitting your car, and making that light come off that reflection. So that's similar to what this word is to try and like um, compare it to that. Hardness is how easily a mineral can be scratched. So as you can see in the picture, that mineral must be pretty soft if that man's fingernail or woman's fingernail can scratch it so easily. Our next word is streak. So streak is the color of the powder that a mineral leaves when it is scratched across a surface. So as you can see in that picture, the person who is doing the streak test must have taken those rocks and scratched them on that special plate, leaving those marks behind. The last word is cleavage. Cleavage is minerals that break along smooth flat surfaces. So when going into this chapter, it's important just to keep in mind that, you know, minerals are all around us. They're in the pencils we're using, the Chromebooks you're probably watching me on. So it's just important to understand, you know, how to classify them and what those properties are and how to compare and contrast these things that, so that you can take those skills and use them in the real world one day. So we're starting on page 239. So you have access to this text in the Google form right now as we're going through it in the video. And if you all and if you wanted to go back and refer to the text, again, you can go to this Google form or it's also in the materials tab in Google Classroom where you can find the Quizlet as well. So we'll start with, like I said, page 239, mineral crystals. The salt you sprinkle on your food is a mineral. The metal fork you use when you eat is made from minerals. The ceramic plate you put food on is made from minerals. Minerals are natural, non-living solid crystals that make up rocks. Scientists have identified more than 4,000 kinds of minerals, but most of Earth's rocks are made of only a small number of them. These are often called the rock-forming minerals. All around the world, each mineral has the same chemical composition. A grain of a mineral quartz from a beach in Australia has the same chemical in it as a chunk of quartz chipped from a mountain in California. So after reading that, you have a, your first question. It says, analyze. What is the relationship between minerals and rocks? So I'm not going to do that answer with you. But if I were to be doing this Google form to find that answer, I would look back in that small portion of text that I just read and look for where I can find that relationship between mineral and crystals. And it's important to understand what the question is asking as well. So if you reread that question, it's saying, what is the relationship between minerals and crystals? So what is something that is similar or alike or that they have something in common, that relationship? What is their dynamic almost between the two of those, between the minerals and the rocks? So when you're typing that answer below, one, make sure it's in complete sentences. And two, make sure you're using some text evidence and going back and making sure that your answer is correct. So our next page is page 240. And that's properties of minerals. Most rocks are made of different combination of minerals. Each type of rock always has a similar combination of minerals. Granite always contains quartz and feldspar crystal. Some rocks have only one or two minerals. 
white marble is made only of the mineral calcite. How can you tell minerals apart? Scientists identify minerals by testing their properties. So that question was just answered. When it says, how can you tell minerals apart? Then right there's that answer. Scientists identify minerals by testing their properties. These include color, luster, hardness, streak, cleavage, and crystal shape, which are all which are most of the words that we went over in our vocab. So the next section is color and luster. It is easy to see the color of a mineral, but the same mineral can be different colors. Some color alone, so color alone is usually not enough to identify a mineral. Scientists must look at other properties, such as luster. Here's another vocab word. Luster is a way the surface of a mineral reflects light. A glassy luster is shiny, like glass. A metallic luster looks like a polished metal. A soft shine can be described as a waxy, silky, or pearly luster. Some minerals have a greasy or dull, chalky luster. So here in the text too, you see three pictures of three different kinds of mineral crystals. So you can look at those. They're all very unique shapes. And then the question that goes along with this, is looking at the color of the mineral alone enough to identify what mineral you are looking at? Why or why not? So again, make sure that's a complete sentence when you're answering that question and make sure you include why or why not. So you've got to back up that answer, beef it up so, so it's correct. So then the next page is page 241, hardness. Scientists can also measure, measure a mineral's hardness. Hardness is how easily the surface of a mineral can be scratched. The Mohs scale shown above ranks minerals by hardness. Talc is the softest mineral. It has a hardness of one. So you can see that over here, it's the softest and it's moving over. The next one it says is diamonds are the hardest minerals. A mineral can scratch other minerals with lower moss ranking. For example, Fluorite has a hardness of four. It can scratch all minerals with a hardness of less than four, such as gypsum. All right. Our next section is on streak. Streak. The same mineral can be different colors, but all samples of a certain mineral will leave the same streak. Streak is the color of the powder that a mineral leaves when it is scratched across a special plate. Some minerals, such as gold, leave streak that matches their color, but sometimes the streak is a different color than the mineral itself. For example, hemite can be a silver or red, but its streak is but its streak is always red. So again, they have three different pictures that show that they have different streaks. The questions here are what is the correct definition of hardness? So again, there's three choices there, but you want to make sure you're picking the best choice or the correct choice. So again, for me, if I was answering that question, what is the correct definition of hardness? I would read all of my choices and then I would go back into the text and look where it talks about hardness. Then I can make sure that when I'm selecting my answer, I'm confident that I'm making the best choice. The next question is a true or false. True or false, the color of the rock is always the same as its streak. So again, I would make sure I go back in the text to where it talks about streak and see if that's correct, to see if that's true or false. So moving on, page 242. Shape and cleavage. Each mineral has crystals that are a particular shape. These crystal shapes can be helpful when trying to identify a mineral crystal. Crystals are classified by the shapes and the angles that they form. For example, fluorite has cube-shaped crystals. Corundum crystals look more like hexagons. The shape of a mineral is not always easy to see. Scientists must sometimes use magnifiers or microscopes to see a crystal shape. Most minerals will break its definite patterns. Minerals that break along smooth, flat surfaces have cleavage. For example, mica has perfect cleavage. It breaks into thin, shiny layers that are flat and smooth. Some minerals do not have any cleavage. Quartz often breaks into pieces with smooth surface that looks like the inside of a seashell. Still, other minerals splinter like a piece of wood. So when you, if you've ever seen a piece of wood that's splintered, it kind of looks jaggedy and ridged. 
So the questions that go along with this, this section is, so the question here is, if you have a small mineral sample, why might testing for cleavage be one of the last things you do? Give me your best guess on this one. So again, go back and read that text. And basically it's saying, if I have a very small piece of mineral that I'm trying to get a, that I'm trying to do a cleavage test on, would that be the best choice? Knowing that what cleavage is by going back in the text is when they are breaking this piece along a smooth flat surface. So you would have to see if breaking this small piece of mineral would be the best way, would be, if it not should be the best way, if it should be one of the last things that you do. So the next page is page 243. So other mineral properties. There are many other ways to identify certain minerals. Two minerals, pyphite and magnite, are attracted by magnets. Sometimes magnite can also, can actually be a magnet. Some minerals, such as gold, silver, and copper, can be shaped or cut. Scientists can use chemical tests to identify some minerals. For example, if you drop vinegar on calcite, bubbling will occur. That's interesting. You can use other senses to identify minerals. Not all minerals feel the same when you touch them. Some minerals can be identified by their smell or taste. So that was our last page. So you have a couple more questions that go along with that. What are your senses? Which of your senses might you use the most often when identifying minerals? So you make sure you're going back and looking at the different ways they identify the minerals and coming to your best answer, your best conclusion on which sense is used most often. How can minerals be classified? Check all that apply. So make sure you go ahead and check all of them that apply. It's more than one. It's just a little hint. <laughs> Which property might you test by rubbing one mineral directly against another? So again, is that a streak test, a harness test, or a cleavage test? Once you've finished all of those, you can go ahead and move on to your exit ticket. Your exit ticket is just a, a very simple one. You're just going to be using complete sentences and tell me three facts that you learned from today's science lesson. So again, just fact one, fact two, fact three. Then lastly, I put this here just because I'm not teaching this lesson to you guys live. And it's still very important to me that if you do have any questions or need any more further clarification on the lesson, that you have that opportunity to reach out and make sure me and Ms. Hulk know that you're struggling and need some extra help. So if you have any questions about today's lesson that you need more clarification on, you can type them below. They don't have to be complete sentences. You can just say, I need help on this, or I, I didn't understand that, or whatever it may be. But if you don't have any questions, you can skip this response and just submit your Google form. And of course, if you do have a question, me or Ms. Hulk will get back to you and make sure that we do clarify and make sure everything's understood for you. So lastly is the lesson summary. The lesson summary just includes an overall summary of the lesson that was just taught to you, just kind of in a shorter condensed version, just so that if you do have any questions or if you do need that extra clarification, that maybe this lesson summary could help you get some of those answers that you are looking for. So again, just keep in mind that it's just important that we know how to how minerals are classified because we want to be able to know what's going on in the world around us and, you know, know the, the, the real world and how rocks and minerals go hand in hand and how they're the same. You want to make sure that when you're going through this lesson and when you're going back in the text to find your answers, that you're looking and rereading so that you can come up with the best answer for your Google form. So I'll see you guys next time on the next lesson I'm teaching you guys, and I hope you do a good job. Bye.